month of October, empowered by the Spirit to fulfill destiny. And this morning, very briefly, we shall be teaching on empowered by the Spirit to fulfill my glorious destiny. Part 4A. Empowered by the Spirit to fulfill my glorious destiny. Part 4A. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. It is the Spirit that quickens. It is the Spirit that makes life a worth life, a living life. It is the Spirit. Without the Spirit, the body is dead. Without the Spirit, the body can do nothing. It is the Spirit that quickens. So until the Spirit of God empowers your life, empowers your body, you cannot have a glorious future. By the Spirit of God, you stand. By the Spirit of God, you know the future. Somebody say we don't know what will happen tomorrow, but by the Spirit of God, we can predict what will happen tomorrow. And by the Spirit of God that empowers you and I, we know we will live long on the earth. It is the spirit that quickened the flesh profited nothing. And Jesus said, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit, they are life. The word that I speak unto you has life of God, eternal life back in it. Somebody shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. Now, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. And you know in the body of Christ, the spirit is the one that is in charge. Shout hallelujah. And he said in the last day, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain. Now, look at that, that statement. Isaiah chapter 2, from verse 1 to 2. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established where? In the top of the mountain. Man, you are a top mountain man and woman. You are not meant for low places of the earth. If the Spirit quicken you, you are meant for the top of the mountain. You are not meant for the low valley. You are not meant for low places. You are a city. He said, the mountain of the Lord's house, talking about you and me. The church is not the building. The church is a living church, not the building. So when the Bible says, it shall be established on the top of the mountain, it's talking about you and me. He said, and it shall be exalted above all the hills. Man, every crooked way shall be made straight. Every rough road shall be made smooth. It shall be exalted above the hills. Now look at it. All nations shall flow into it. How many nations? Man, all nations. You shall become a sought after. The Holy Spirit changes your status from being pity to being envy. All nations. He changes your status from looking for job to become job employer. You become employers of labor. Can't you see the wisdom of God at operation in this commission? While many people are releasing people from their job, we are asking for employment. We are asking for people to come. There is job for your headquarters now. We have announced it. Check the notice board. Why? The power of the Holy Ghost will be domiciled in the church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen to me. God has investment everywhere on the earth. But the palace of church and the palace of God is in the church. He has investment all over the world. But the palace is in the church. He rules from the church. All nations. How many nations? Is there chapter one? Is there chapter two, verse one to two? Put it back. All nations shall flow to, into it. And verse two, look at it. It shall come to pass. Now go to. It shall be exalted, and all he shall flow into it. Yes. Go, look at verse three quickly, quickly, quickly. Verse three. And many people shall go and say, "Come ye, 
Let us go to the mountain of the Lord. To where? To the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways. The waves of wisdom. We will walk in his power. For out of Zion shall go forth the Lord. And the word of the Lord. From where? From Jerusalem. He will teach us. That talks about the wisdom of God. What is wisdom, sir? It is the ways of God. Wisdom of God is simply the ways of God. The path of God. The doctrine of God. The teaching of God. Simply, that's wisdom. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Now, the end time church will gain prominence by many-sided, manifold, complicated wisdom of God. The church of Jesus will gain prominence. Listen to me. We are just beginning to start. We are just what? We are beginning to start. All the rumor of what you are hearing, you know, is because the church will soon rise up. The church will take up in the air. Somebody shout hallelujah. That, you are hearing all this rumor. Boko Haram. No. We are yet to take up. The church will take up in the air. And there is no nation, no power on the earth can stop the church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. You know what that means? No power, no occultic force, no power of any darkness can stop your rising. Why? The church has dominion. The church has what? Dominion. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Tell your neighbor I'm going somewhere. The wisdom of God comes from the Holy Spirit. The wisdom of God comes from the Holy Spirit. The wisdom of God, when it's upon you, makes you creatively productive. It makes you creatively productive. You are resourceful. The wisdom of God enlightens your understanding to know what God has in store for you. The wisdom of God enlightens your understanding to know what God has in store for you. The wisdom of God opens up your mind and imparts you with creative abilities. Now, listen to me. You don't need to bother whether you are employed or not. Hello? When the Holy Ghost takes over, you become employer. Because he gives you what no man else knows. Because you are unique. Somebody shout hallelujah. Every exploit in life is tied to wisdom operation. Every exploit in life is tied to wisdom operation display. Wisdom offers you strange skills in the area God has placed you. Strange skills. Listen to this. Nobody is against you. Nobody is against your color. It is the quality of your resolve that defines the height you will ever reach in destiny. It is the quality of your resolve by the operation of supernatural wisdom that defines the height you will ever reach in destiny. Now listen to this. You gain respect by result. Isn't it? Nobody respects a failure. That's why I know every trace of failure in your life will totally be wiped out this morning. You gain respect by a result. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. Look at what the Bible says. For what man knoweth the things of a man? Save the spirit of man, which is in him. Oh, yes. Even so, the things of God know when no man by the spirit of God. What does it mean? It is the spirit of wisdom that delivered to you the wisdom of God. Please don't forget. It is the spirit of wisdom that imparts to you the wisdom of God. Can I come again? Today's impartation service. As I'm speaking, the Bible says, as Peter speak these words, the Holy Ghost came upon them. Now, I pray the understanding will be imparted to you by the Holy Ghost now. Now, hear this statement. 
It is the spirit of wisdom that impart to you the wisdom of God. Talking about Solomon. Solomon, it was the spirit of God that came upon Solomon. And that spirit of God impart to him the wisdom of God. That spirit of God gave to him a wise understanding heart. Now, knowing what to do is wisdom. And in the last day, there shall be waves of supernatural wisdom in the body of Christ. Everybody on his own path. Shame and reproach will be wiped off the body of Christ. Watch out. Glory to God. Shame and reproach. He said, and my people shall never be ashamed. My people shall never be ashamed. Shame and reproach will be wiped off. Why? Because the spirit of wisdom impart to any man, any woman, the wisdom of God. To know what to do. To know the step to take. To know where to go. To know the way to go. To know how to go about that issue. About that job. Is, is that clear to someone this morning? You need the spirit of God. The Holy Ghost imparts you with the supernatural wisdom of God. Can you know when they came to Jesus? They said this woman is caught in adultery. What shall we do? Oh yes, there are situations like that in your life. If Jesus said they should kill her according to the law, so are you not a Messiah? Didn't you say you came to save people? And if you said they should, they should save her, oh, so you are against the law of Moses. So you, in that condition, Jesus bowed down and stood and the wisdom of God came upon him and he knew what to do. And he escaped their hand. Not only escaped, he saved the life of that woman. Whatever you have been hap, whatever you have been caged, whatever you have been battered, whatever you have been pity, this morning, the wisdom of God that comes upon you will bail you out. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 He said, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him Isaiah 11 verse 2 And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him The spirit of wisdom and understanding The spirit of counsel and mind The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord The Holy Ghost is in the pattern Talking about Joseph Oh, can you see a slave boy? And the Spirit of God came upon him in the prison. The Spirit of Wisdom located Joseph. He hear me? When the Spirit of Wisdom locates you, you are out of dungeon of life. You are out of struggle zone of life. Crave for the Spirit of God. Now hear this. Bishop Edeko said, I crave for it for 26 months. How many months? 26 months. Two years and two months craving for the spirit of wisdom. And when God answered, he said, I will not have you go the way others have gone. Send for my servant, I will have him lay hand on you. After the order of Moses laying hands on Joshua, your eloquence does not scare demons, sir. Ah. No. Whether you went to school has nothing to do. It is not a technological wisdom. Hello, sir. Hello. We are not talking of scientific wisdom. This kind of wisdom is not got in university. The professors has no answer to it. No. You know what the Bible says? It said, by me, king reign. So there are kings that will not reign without wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Hear me, pastors. You can't say you're a pastor without wisdom. You are blowing nonsense grammar. Chaff! Without wisdom, you are nowhere only tied to dry one it is wisdom of god at work in you yes. that makes you an a, a unique entity joseph left prison it was only his name that was mentioned in the prison of pharaoh sir god will remember someone today yes. demon don't respect your grammar they don't respect your argument they don't respect 
respect your reasoning. Are you hearing me, sir? No, they don't respect your suit. <laughs> They don't respect you being a resident pastor. Whether you are a pope, the demon don't answer to that. Ask the Pharisees. They will tell you. They have been there before Jesus came. Oh, you want to say something? Ask the magicians in the days of Daniel. Ask the astrologers. Ask the Chaldeans. Ask the soothsayers. They were all relegated. Listen to me. The church will be prominently regarded in our days. The church of Jesus will enter its final prominence. And the devil has no answer to that. Glory to God. We will locate his way. We will walk in his path. Because the paths, his path are the highways of life. Listen, the day of your toilings are over this morning. The day when people will be pitying you are over this morning. Yeah. I'd like you to understand this wisdom, you don't get it in university. No. Daniel didn't get it in university. Joseph never went there. It's not technological wisdom. It's not scientific wisdom. If not, the soothsayer would have gotten it. He said, where is this wisdom coming from? <laughs> where is it? He said, it is God. God give them this wisdom. Listen to me. One day of God's wisdom will end all your life toiling, sir. One day. Now, sir, all the day Joseph spent the prison work can, was not even mentioned when the wisdom came upon him. Nobody, no, we didn't know. Because that wisdom terminated the struggle. One. And, and, and not Joseph as the president of that nation. Glory to God. You are coming out. I say you are coming out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your aim is under construction. In Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 4 verse 22. Look at it. Everybody was amazed. And all bear him witness. They will bear you witness very soon. And wonder at the gracious word. Which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? What? <laughs> Sir, wisdom is a maker. Wisdom is a maker. The Spirit of God imparts the wisdom of God. The Spirit of God imparts the wisdom of God. Don't say I didn't go to school. You don't need school. You need the Holy Ghost to impart you, sir. Somebody shout hallelujah. Lotonio. If you know the Frenchman, Lotonio. Which school did he go? But he was the first man that made uh, uh, this dagger that raised, uh, what do they call it now? That, that raised uh, a ha. He, he didn't go to school. He said, but I attend church. I'm committed every day. And God imparted it. Now, the person that made this for uh, 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 Bob, he was just a lab attendance. We are talking about superior wisdom, not earthly wisdom. It's coming upon you in this service. It will change your story, it will change your status, it will lift you from dungeon to your topmost top. In the name of Jesus, let me hear your loudest amen if you believe that. If you believe what I'm saying, let me hear your loudest amen. If you believe what I'm saying, let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Now, the spirit of wisdom connects you with the wisdom of God. And the Holy Spirit quickens your understanding. When he comes upon you, he fires in you. He refines your flesh. He refines your blood. He refines your bones. And all the organs of your body. So there is no room to, for you to be weakened. Romans 8, 11. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. He, when the Holy Ghost comes like fire. He said, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also what? Quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwell in you. There is no dull moment in your life when the Holy Ghost is at, is at work. 
No dull moment. Every moment is a mark in your life. He refines your bone. He refines your brain. He quickens your mind to understand to a level that no ordinary man can. The fire you up. You are going somewhere. In the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, number two, because of my time, the Holy Spirit is a spirit of dedication. Say with me, dedication. Say with me, dedication. The Holy Spirit empowers our dedication to God. He empowers us to be dedicated. Look at what the Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 3. He said, for to their power, Macedonian church, I bear record. Yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. They were what? Willing of themselves. What is dedication? It is an unparalleled dedication to the kingdom of God and the affairs of the kingdom. Unparalleled dedication. Now, Rain is falling heavily. But is there anybody here who, if, if he wants to travel, they say your flight is by 8 a.m. and rain is falling by 6 a.m. Will you, will you cancel your flight? Hello, sir. Will you cancel your flight? You find no matter what, you enter a vehicle, airport. Airport. I must not be late. Airport. Particularly international flight. You will never mind. Why? Dedication to that. Now, if, you are, if, if today is Monday and rain is falling, will you not go to work, especially government worker? Hello, sir. Or the market woman, will you not go? Will you not say, no, rain is falling, I won't go? You will go. You off your shoe and put inside the nylon. But the, the, the director general must not be there before you. Hello, sir. Am I talking? Dedication. So, what the Holy Spirit does is to empower your commitment. He empowers you to be committed. The Bishop Bodeco says, deadly commitment. You are committed to God's kingdom and the affairs of kingdom. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's why, look at what the Bible says, for to their power I be a record. Yea, beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. Ah, they gave themselves first of all. And until the Holy Ghost empowers you, you can't be committed. You always give excuse. You will always find reason. You will always complain. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. John chapter 10, verse 70 to 18. He said, therefore... Of my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. Studio. Therefore, does my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again? No man taketh it from me, but I lay down on myself. I have power to lay down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Now, hear this. When you are committed to God's kingdom, when you are committed to in every aspect, God will be committed to you to lift you up. Now, God will never be committed to you than you are committed to Him. You know, He told Eli. He said, He that honored me will I honor. Ha! He that honored me, he that is committed to my kingdom, I will be committed to him. He told Eli, even though I promise you, I break that promise because you don't honor me. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 30. Because you refuse to honor me, your, your commitment is a yastic to honoring God. Look at what the Bible says. Wherefore the Lord of God of Israel said, I said indeed, that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. Now look at it. May God not change his mind about you. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me. For them that honor me will I honor. Them that are committed to me will be committed to. 
And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Jesus said, I gave my whole life for the entire world. Father, I lay down deadly commitment. Faithfulness in every aspect. Glory to God. The Bible was talking about Jesus, Hebrew chapter 2. He said he was faithful in all his house. Faithful, that's commitment. Are you faithful to God? Are you committed? What of the soul winning? Are you committed to soul winning? I said, if by now none of your soul is a member of this church, you have a query from God, not from me. No. Look at what the Bible says in Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9. And I will stop at that. Luke 13, verse 6 to 9. Look at what the Bible says. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought through there on and found none. Ah. May that not be your case. I said, may that not be your case. He came and find none. What did he say? Now, look at verse 7. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. What is the answer? Cut it down. Why encumber it down the ground? Say, that shall not be my portion. Say, that shall not be my portion. You shall not be cut down in your days. Look at verse 8. And he answers, answering, he said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dunk it. That's Holy Ghost pleading on your behalf before the Father. Verse 9. And if it be a fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. You shall not be cut down. If you are not committed, God will not honor you. It's your commitment that provoked the honor of God. Are you committed in service to God, even your service unit? Are you committed in devotion? We said every service unit should have devotion. How many times have you come? Somebody shout hallelujah. This is the way out. This is the way out. Bishop Depo said, deadly commitment. Crazy commitment. Lavishly commitment committed to God. Lavishly committed. Crazily committed. Blindly committed. <laughs> and that's why he's swearing higher and higher. You heard recently how God delivered him from plane crash. Why? God needed a service. God won't allow the devil to take his life. God went ahead and stopped the devil. Glory to God. I read the testimony yesterday. Baba Deboe just rose up early in the morning. 6.30 a.m. He was with him. He said, and he spoke to him. He said, why seek the dead among the living? Look at the prophetic word. And he told, and Baba Deboe told the Lord, said, no. God told him, why are you seeking the dead among the living? And he said, Lord, no. No, my son must not go. And he came very early and spoke that prophetic word to Bishop Odeq. He said, why seek the dead among the living? If you are committed, God won't allow any devil to tamper with your destiny. Hallelujah. And when the attack came, no way. God said, no, somebody has already prayed. <laughs> devil, you came too late. Can you imagine? When I was watching the video yesterday, Bishop said, I, I, I didn't feel anything for myself, but I fed for many children. I fed for many helpless women. He said, tears were coming from Bishop's eye. He said, but I'm not crying for myself. He said, I'm fulfilled. But how about many thousands of women, how they will mock them? Can you see the heart of commitment? He said, how would I, he said Lord, how will I feel if they are mocking these people because of me? And God had... He was so committed to God and to his father in faith. Father in the Lord, Bishop, I mean, Baba Deboe. He told us, he said, that's a father-to-son relationship. Do you know your teacher cannot leave you a legacy? No, your pastor can't. It's only your father that leaves legacy for you. Be connected. Serve God. Be connected to this God. He owns your future. That's why on Friday we have service here. We are celebrating God. And 
the presence of God was so awesome here. Friday, 5 to 7, we were all here dancing for that great deliverance. You will not end your journey in a crash. You will not end your journey in a crash. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of glory. Spirit of what? Spirit of glory. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 14. The Bible says, If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, yes, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. On their part is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. <laughs> spirit of glory. Joel chapter 2, verse 20. Let me just read verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of winners, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Now hear this. The spirit of glory is what terminates shame and reproach. The spirit of glory terminates shame and reproach. What a man. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of glory. When he empowers you, shame and misfortune stay clear of your life. Until the spirit of glory come, shame may be knocking door. But when the spirit of glory comes upon you, shame and misfortune are terminated. Glory to God. Isaiah 61 verse 7, he said, for your shame, you shall have double portion. And in their land, they shall be planted. He said, they shall flourish like the palm tree. What? The Holy Ghost, spirit of glory, for your shame, you shall have double for your confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess what? The double. Everlasting joy, not shame. Everlasting joy, not reproach. Everlasting joy, not grief. Everlasting joy, not sorrow. Everlasting joy, not crying and weeping. Shall be unto them. That shall be your portion today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Well, today is a covenant day of miracle job. Let me say this in closing because of my time. Many job seekers today will become employer of labor very soon. I'd like you to be sensitive. Many job seekers, mark my word, very soon you shall become job employer in the name of Jesus. One of our, one of our brethren shared testimony last week. I don't know whether it's in church. It was in that condition working and working for a company and something happened, he was thrown out. He thought it was Abuja. He went to Abu city of Abuja. You had his testimony. Nothing was working for him. And then he sought the law. And the Holy Ghost inspired him. Start this. You know, I told you, the Holy Ghost spirit of glory, when he comes upon a terminate shape, he started a company called Gifted Hand, uh, 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 gas, uh, gifted hand, automobile service, gas. <laughs> Today he has his own place. He has people working for him, pay their salary, pay tight. You will soon join that company. You will soon be like that in the name of Jesus. Your MS is under construction. Your MS is under construction. Now, here are the testimony of this brother. We read it yesterday. One brother. Muhammad, he was a Muslim before. He refused to accept Christ. But one day, he said, I challenge Jesus to prove himself. And show me that he is the Lord. And as I slept that night, I received a Bible quotation in my dream. Philippians 2.11. You know what Philippians 2.11 says? Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. He woke up and read it. Immediately he surrendered his life to Jesus Christ. Fully and confessed that Jesus is Lord. That same day, Say that same day. He said his uncle, an Abuja based multimillionaire who never have remembered him, with chains of company, who has forgotten him, calling and told him to come and resume in his company as managing director with immediate effect. He resumed office on 30th of May. Now, it was the, the story began on 26th. By 30th of May, he had resumed work. 
an attended board meeting that same day where he was made the GMD over three of his multi-million company what monthly remuneration of 600,000 official accommodation at Sokoro uh -uh. and as if that was not enough he was given two vehicles a Toyota Venza and Honda car not as official but personal cars as ownership of the cars were transferred to him that same day indeed there is God in Winners Chapel my case is different I thank the God of this commission for terminating over five year joblessness in my life truly Jesus is Lord brother Muhammad D. if God can do it for somebody who just know him made this year how about you your story is changing this morning your story is changing this morning your image is under construction when you are guided by the detail of scriptures, sir, he said, His word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's the Holy Spirit of God. Get Him. You are suffering because you don't have Him. You are suffering because you are not committed to Him. Embrace the Holy Ghost. Shout hallelujah. I don't know your case this morning. Maybe you are paid employment. I mean, maybe you are, you are a paid employment. Maybe you are a contractor and supplier. Maybe you are a consultant without clients anymore. Maybe you are a mechanic. Maybe you are a petty trader. Maybe you sell cake bean. I mean bean cake. Maybe you are always paraguay. Maybe you are always selling food around the street. It does not matter. Maybe you are a sale man, sale woman, computer literate, measure it. Maybe you are a fresh graduate that has joined the NYSC. There is answer for you today. Amen. I said there is answer for you today. Amen. Now it includes anyone not engaged productively. If you are not engaged productively daily, you need a miracle intervention of God today. A miracle intervention of God today. But I have this charge for you. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Quickly. As I rhymed up. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament. Quickly. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. Praise God, someone. Look at what the scripture says. He said, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy mind, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Find something to do. One of our students at CU was selling bread to pay her school fees. What was he selling? Bread. He said, man, to pay his school fees. He was selling bread. Bread. In my place, they say Buredi. In the north, they say Burodi. <laughs> he was selling bread, sir. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it. There is something in this land. I saw the story of Hagar, the mother of Ishmael. When he was sent out of the house, Genesis chapter 21, look at verse 16. 17 and 19. Genesis 21. Verse 16. 17 and 19. She went. You know she was sent out. Of course she wasn't. She, she, was, she was a mistress to Abraham. And sat her down over against a good way off. He sat opposite the child. I said to her about shot. For she said let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him. And lifted up her voice and wept. That's how people are struggling today, complaining and crying. Verse, look at verse 19. Verse 17, verse 17, yes, verse 17 now. 
And God heard the voice of the Lord, not a cry, not a weeping. God will never hear you murmuring and complaining. He turns away from murmur. He turns away from complainers. He turns away from vain talkers. God is a serious God. And God heard the voice of the Lord. Where he was crying. And the angel of, that, uh, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven. And said unto her, What ailed thee, Hagar? Why are you crying? Why are you complaining? Why are you weeping? Why are you sorrowful? Why complain? What ailed thee, Hagar? Fear not. For God has heard the voice of the Lord, not your voice. No matter, the more you complain, the more you complicate your matter. Look at verse 19 because of time. And God opened her eyes. This is the answer. Holy Ghost, open my eyes. I don't care who you are. If you are not working, if you are not feeding your family, we will see what the Bible says, not me. And God opened her eyes. She saw what? A well of water. God will open your eyes to know what to do this week. Hey, God will open somebody's eyes to know what to do this week. Put it back, put it back. And God opened her eyes. She saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad to drink. All you need to open your eye. There is a well of water by your side. There is something you can do. Stop depending on your wife. It is against the scripture. Don't work against the covenant. Don't work against the covenant or else you will corrupt you with flattery. It's dangerous to walk against the covenant. Somebody shout hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. First Timothy. Our prayer, Lord, open my eyes. There is a well of water. But if any provide not for his home, and especially for those of his own house, he has denied what? May you not deny the faith. And is worse than what? That shall not be your case. I like you to be provoked to take step. You can't be begging. You can't be pitiful. You can't be going around every day for how long? If we help you to pay your house this year, who will help you to pay next year? It, it doesn't work that way. That Bishop, that's a blessed memory. He gave money to Bishop. Bishop said, no, I would rather know the source. I'm not taking it. Why must you remain a beggar? I want you to be charged. There is something you can do. A boy was selling bread to pay school fees in Covenant University till she finished. Another boy was selling bread in Molue in Lagos. I've told you I've sold bean cake before to bail my family out of shame. Glory to God. Before you find what you want to do, do something first. Start somewhere. There are a Babin saloon everywhere. Don't say I'm a graduate. It may grant you. It may grant you. Listen. Nothing distinct destiny like dedication to an assignment, sir. Glory to God. Let me tell you a secret. In this commission, before we take you to be a full-time pastor, you must be working. Oh, that's why many are not taking... You must show us your tithe of six months at least. So, it means you are not only working, you are a tighter, so that you don't bring devourer to the, to, 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 to the entire family. Chairman, Managing committee, anybody who wants to work, you must check the tithe of the man. Please do it judiciously. Pastor Wise, Chairman, you are here. You must check their tight. I'm serious. Tight must be checked. Do something. My sister, nobody wants to marry liability anymore. No matter your beauty. A brother knows it will wear out very soon. Your beauty is no job. Look for something. There are a saloon. Can you be begging? No. Hear this. I always tell myself, I don't want to retire and be looking for what to do. Lord, show me before I retire. No. Till I go, I want to be doing something bad, my brother. Doing something. Glory to God. Till I go. Can't 
wake up in the morning and sit down and uh, uh, is any pere winko there? Pere what? You will not stink. You will not stink. In the name of Jesus Christ. Second Thessalonians chapter three verse ten. Second Thessalonians chapter three verse ten. You are, now look at what the Bible says. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any will not work, neither should he eat. Hello? If any will not work, that you are not working, the put food in front of you should be a concern. Lord, this one must be the last before I get job. You must get to that stage. Stop depending on government, sir. So, when all you finish, must you finish? Stop the bed. Look, your father is the source of all things, sir. Your father owns the land. Hi. Your father owns heaven and earth. Psalm 34 verse 5. They look unto him. They were lighting. Your father owns the resources of heaven and earth. Why must you be jobless? Somebody came to me years ago. He said, I've been sacked. I look at where he told me the place. Government, I say, you are sacked so that you can get a better one. He received it with good joy. With an excited mind. And two weeks later, he got, the job he got was ten times better. More profitable than the one he lost. If you cry by one closed door, you will never see several seven doors that are open before you. Don't murmur. Hagar couldn't see, sir, because he was crying, weeping. Mama, I'm a winner. We started in Bodania. How can God answer everybody? He didn't answer me. God said, you will cry there, you are my daughter. You will cry there now, and I will like it. No. Wisdom is sitting down. Lord, I look up to you. Enough of the joblessness. My hand must not be weary. Paul said, we command every man. If they don't work, they must not eat. Glory to God. I don't have that moment. When I finished school before they come for NYC, I started. No. I started going around. For what? I don't love money, but I like money. Hello? Hello? Ego. Do you know ego? <laughs> hey. He said money answers all things. How many things? And nothing doesn't answer everything. No? That's why you see some anointed men of God, they struggle. The blow grammar on the altar. The spirit of money doesn't answer to grammar. It answers to work. Answer to what? You see, it doesn't answer to grammar. Not eloquency. You see, when in America, you say, yeah. You will yeah and yeah and yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Not by eloquency. Not by putting your hand in your, in your pocket and posing around. Stop posing. Stop posing around. Let's see your, the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The thing that Jesus began to, to do, how to preach. What are you doing? We are only seeing your preaching. Do something. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. Don't stop going around as a brother. And you are posting you a winner. That's not the character of a winner. Jobs are everywhere, sir. Go, there are days of small beginning. Days of what? Job 8-7. There are days of small beginning. It's your turn to shine. It's your son to make it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you this? You'll never be stranded in life again. God will visit you this month. Listen to me. Everyone that is looking for joy, this month will not pass. If you believe sincerely, you are committed to soul winning, this month will not pass. You will get your miracle job. By all means, you must get your miracle job. Stand to your feet. I'd like you to pray. Holy Spirit of God, you know all things. I want to be empowered by wisdom of God to know what to do. I don't want to be idle anymore. I don't want to be idle anymore. Lord, by the Holy Ghost, show me what to do. Enlighten me. Are you ready to pray that prayer? He will hear you when you pray. Lift up your voice now. Lift up your hands to heaven. Holy Spirit, empower me now. Empower me by spirit of, empower me with wisdom of God. 
to know what to do, to know the step to take, the way to go, and how to go about it. Holy Spirit, empower me. Maria kato predika ka. Kandiko to zosu zo preteke liba. Aliandos koto. Aliandos toko. Megari katabra. Mazon to predika ta. Eziza zo 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 preteke li. Lia baruka zasa kata. E payaba kato predika nto. Zolia zo kete proto. Empower me Lord. To know what to do. How to go about it. Mekotoperia, Mekotusta, E Kalia Katozo Susa, lift up your voice, lift up your voice, cry to him. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Bring out your job desire. You have written it, we have told you, in case you bother. You know, people don't care sometimes, but in case you put it in mind, we have announced it. Bring out your desire in your hand. Bring out your contact. Maybe you want to be a driver. Um, I say driver, me. Uh, Dangote, today is a household, household name. He started selling uh, uh, salt and sugar. Praise God. Bring out whatever job you desire. You want to work in oil company, Chevron, bring them out. It's according to your faith. According to your word? God will never honor you then, you then you are committed to him. It's according to your faith. Praise God. Now listen to me. You need this wisdom of God. You need what? Sir, I saw something in the Bible that amazes me. Solomon got wisdom, sir. Got what? Wisdom. Ah. This wisdom is what I am still craving for. The bishop said he craved for it for 26 months. I will crave for it all the days of my life, sir. Amen. Ah. You know, this pastor is a very hard-working man. Anytime he wants to go on business, when he tell me, I say go. Because I, I know he is working. Praise God. And I tell him, I say, any winner chapel in that town, make sure you show yourself there. Abi, show yourself there. That you travel does not mean you won't attend covenant hour. You are hearing me now. If you want to travel now, you come to me, I will tell you which town. Newi, that's a living picture. When you get there, tell the pastor to call me. Give him my number. I will call. You can't hide anywhere. You can't. It's, it's, we are in a perilous time and the church must rise. You must rise. Don't travel and hide anywhere. No. There is a winner's family everywhere you go. Praise God. So if you say this place is 6 a.m., you can't come. They are. It's 5.30 a.m. So you must still attend. You have, you have had the memo this morning. Solomon operated this wisdom, sir. 700 wives. There is no crisis. Now, my question is, how, how did he feed them? <laughs> Sir, there is no cry, 700 women, and you know, if you have two women, this is no problem. Two of us. If one is not a carry, if you are not having wisdom of God, you, that, that, that one may cause a problem. But this man has 700 wives, sir. He didn't stop there. How many concubines? And everybody no fight. How was he feeding them? You won't die in poverty. Yeah. Wisdom of God. Say wisdom. And the giver is the Holy Ghost. You can't have it and you are standing. No. You can't have the Holy Spirit and you are standing. Don't fake it. You can't have the Holy Spirit and be stranded. Praise God forever. I told one of my children, I said, if you have the Holy Spirit, you can't fail. No. I said, check it very well. You can't have the Holy Spirit. God, he quicken you to work. I like you to pray seriously. This is a, this is a moment I want body to be serious. Lord, make my hand a profitable hand. Make my hand. If there is any enchantment in my family that is enchanting my destiny, let it be destroyed now. Make my hand a profitable hand. Make me a blessing. Not only to live and be working, make me a blessing in my generation. A blessing to others. Pray this prayer with all your heart. Father, make my life a profitable life. Make my hand a profitable hand. Make me a blessing, not just living. Oh Lord, make me a blessing in my generation. This week, let the Spirit of God impart me with wisdom to know what to do, what to do, 
where to go, where to go, how to go. Abba Father, can take a ziso zo pretikata. Riaku zakata prate keteke. Zese zuzo zo pretikata. Tempro toko zusa zakata. Eka to pretika zalia. Aka to pretika tozo su zalia kataba. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Before I bless you and the, the things in your hand, I want your eyes closed, your head bowed. You are here this morning. You want your struggle and misfortune, the spell attacking your life to be destroyed. Jesus said, come unto me. You have to come to him. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. I will terminate that thing, no matter what it is. For every knee must bow. And everyone must confess that Jesus is Lord. If you are that person this morning, I'd like you to say this prayer in your heart with me. Where you are, say with me in your heart, Father, I thank you for bringing me to this service to terminate joblessness in my life, to destroy struggle and misfortune. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit to open my eyes, to quicken my life to what it should be. And the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, is a new man. All things are passed away. Behold, all are become new. I thank you for forgiving me, for cleansing me, and I thank you for a new beginning, a great start from today. Thank you for visiting me this morning. In Jesus' precious name.